Hi, I'm David Busick. Welcome. I'm glad you're joining people all around the world to study way, truth, life, discipleship as a journey of grace. During the next seven weeks, we will be exploring the various ways that God's seeking, saving, sanctifying, sustaining, and sufficient grace meets us where we are in our lives. Jesus invites us to a journey. Come, follow me. It's a simple invitation to go on an adventure. The Christian life is more than right belief. It's more than intellectual assent. It is an invitation to a journey with Jesus. Another word for the journey with Jesus is discipleship. Discipleship, following the way of Jesus with Jesus, has many twists and turns and unexpected bends in the road. Sometimes the path feels easy and other times demanding, but the end goal of discipleship is always the same, to be like Christ. If that seems impossible, you're actually in a very good place to start. In fact, it would be impossible if it were not for a very important certainty. We make the journey with Jesus. That's why it's a journey of grace. When Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life, he was talking about more than a sequential equation or a transactional agreement we make with God to go to heaven when we die. He was describing the relational way that discipleship will happen. Indeed, way, truth, and life are not just principles. Way, truth, and life are a person because the journey of grace is relational to the core. Best of all, he promises to accompany us all the way home. Jesus will be our way for the way. This is the hope of a journey of grace. When Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life, it was a response to a question raised by scared and uncertain disciples. It comes from a section in the Gospel of John that biblical scholars refer to as the last discourse, John 14 through 17. These four chapters of John, more than any of the other New Testament Gospels, give us an inside look into what Jesus was thinking about and teaching his disciples during the hours just before his passion and death on the cross. They could well be described as the last will and testament of Jesus Christ. Remember, the disciples have just heard incredibly bad news. They have gathered in a borrowed room. Everyone is packed into tight quarters. Jesus washes his 12 disciples' feet, making everyone uncomfortable. And then he proceeds to tell them that very soon, one of them will betray him. To make matters even worse, after several years of traveling everywhere together, Jesus tells them that he is leaving and that they cannot go with him. This is very upsetting. Jesus can feel the weight of his words settling over them. No wonder he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. I am going to prepare a place for you. I will come again and I will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. That's when Thomas speaks up. History has named him Doubting Thomas, but I am glad he was there because Thomas had the courage to ask the question that everyone else wanted an answer to. He was like a student in a classroom who stops the professor in the middle of his lecture and says, excuse me, this may be a silly question, but..." We have no idea what you're talking about right now. In fact, it wasn't a silly question. I can appreciate the fact that Thomas had the presence of mind to identify the very large elephant in the room and ask the pressing question on everyone's minds. Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Life is like that, isn't it? There are times that we find ourselves wondering which way to turn times when we thought we knew where we were going or hoped we knew where we were going, but having to admit that we have completely lost our way. There seem to be so many intersections and turns, so many options and dead ends. What we wish for more than anything else in the puzzle of life is a map. 
Thankfully, Jesus answers Thomas's questions and ours. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It's interesting that the emphasis of Jesus' claim is clearly on the way. The way is sequentially first. That's not to say that the truth and the life are not important. It simply means that the truth and the life explain both how and why that Jesus is the way. He is the way because he is the truth, the revelation of God. He is the way because the life of God, available to every person, resides in him and him alone. He is simultaneously both the access to and the embodiment of life with God. That is the heart of the good news of John's gospel, that in Jesus, the incarnate word and unique son of God, we can see and know God in a manner never before made possible. He is the authorized self-disclosure of God. In other words, Jesus is not merely a way, but the way, because he is the exceptional, visible manifestation of the invisible God that we know as Father. Our society today is more spiritually open than it has been in many years. The problem is people are open to many different avenues of spirituality. Christianity is the only faith that makes the definitive claim that Jesus is the exclusive way to God. Jesus did not say, I am one of many ways to the Father. He did not say, you can choose to follow me if you like, but there are other choices that are just as viable. He stated very clearly that he is the only way available that leads to the Father. The fact is, it takes more than sincerity to find the right way. It takes truth. A person can be making good time in the direction that they're going, but if it's the wrong way, it doesn't matter how quickly they arrive. Every person, all of us, is guilty of taking the wrong turn, spiritually speaking. And as a result, we find ourselves far away from God. The prophet Isaiah says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way. The Apostle Paul wrote, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Why? Because we have all taken the wrong road in life. We have all chosen to follow our own way instead of pursuing God's will and way for our lives. The gospel, the good news, is that Jesus came for people like us. The gospel writer Luke tells us that Jesus' stated mission purpose is to seek out and to save the lost. Rather than leaving us standing indecisively at the fork in the road, or worse, aimlessly following the wrong path entirely, Jesus came to show us clearly the only way to the Father, to the new country of the kingdom of God, and to eternal life. This claim of Jesus Christ to be not merely a way and a truth and a life, but to be the true and unique Son of God is the bedrock of Christianity. He is the only means by which we may be saved. Imagine that you're in an unfamiliar town and you ask someone for directions to a particular destination. The person you ask for help could say, oh, you have to veer to the right at the next big intersection and then cross the square, go past the church, stay in the middle lane, which will eventually take you directly to the third street on the right until you come to a four-lane stop. Even with clear guidance, when the way is complicated, the chances of making a wrong turn or getting lost are fairly high. Suppose that instead, the person you ask says, you know, there is no easy way to get there. It's fairly complicated if you've never been there before, so just follow me. Better yet, come with me and I'll take you there. That person not only becomes your guide, they essentially become the way. And you cannot miss getting where you need to go. That's what Jesus does for us. He doesn't just give advice and direction. He walks with us on a journey of grace. Indeed, he doesn't just tell us about the way. He becomes the way. In Jesus, we find the way. 
He is the way home. In Jesus, we find the truth. He embodies the unchanging, sure, and certain truth of the character and nature of the Father. And in Jesus, we find life, abundant life now and in the promised new creation of God to come. This is the journey of grace. I look forward to walking with you over the next several weeks in these sessions. Let's make the journey together.